Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. talk about how to make a fresh start right after this. Trust, and that's what I trust, and that's what I trust, and we don't know freeze around. No. 
blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings, but who said I'm keeping care while I dress? Cause we have to sell them. Putting in work in the soul and nothing that be slap. Yeah, I know it's dumb because it's QDA, Joel, and it's production. Woo! 100 miles of running, stampeding, yeah, you know we coming. And we're doing this with no interruption, and I'm dropping bombs to start taking cover. You know him, there's no one above him, no damn ways, but I live in color. Light it up, light it up, light it up, light it up, light it up. I got the light, 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 because of my God, lit because of my God, get a light of the world. I'm way too lit because of my God, lit because of my God, lit because of my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the light. I got the, I got the light. I got the light. I got the, I got the light. I got the light. I got the, I got the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to thank Marcus Cox for being our featured artist featuring uh, C. Lewis singing Way Too Lit. Thank you guys so much. And listen, if you want to be part of moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer, make sure you email me at info at wordtherapypublishing.com. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I want to get right into this lesson. I won't be before you long, but I want to encourage you guys on this new year to make a fresh start. And so today I'm gonna to talk about how to make a fresh start. And we're gonna look at various scriptures and I hope that that will bless you. I know last week, um, how to move forward really blessed so many of you. And I wanna say if any at any time you wanna watch the replay of any of these broadcasts, make sure you go to uh, my YouTube page, which is bit.ly forward slash Tony Tube. Both the T's are capitalized, it's capitalized and everything else is lowercase. So make sure that you follow me over there and you can watch as many times you can share with other people and make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. So I wanna go over the first scripture with you that I want to share with you. I'm reading from Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God is doing a new thing. He is doing a new thing in our lives. And one thing about a new year, it brings forth um, the opportunity to see that. You feel the freshness, you feel like things are changing, you feel like you have a fresh start. But let me just tell you that at any time in your life, you're ready to make a fresh start, you can do that because God makes all things new and you cannot make a fresh start without God. You've got to consult him. Now, there's a lot of things that we do. We make resolutions, New Year's resolutions, we make plans, we make goals. But honestly, dear ones, until you put it in God's hands and then make the plans as he, you Got, gotten his blessings, blessings, you've gotten his guidance. As you do that, those plans will be fulfilled. And so God is always doing something new. He says, behold, I am doing a new thing. And you, you should be able to feel that and know that, and that God is not stagnant. He's always moving and he's always willing with outstretched hands to have you come before him and say, I want to start anew. I don't like how I did that. I know it's not pleasing in your sight. It wasn't pleasing in my sight and I've gotten it wrong. Please forgive me and help me start anew. So let's look at the other scripture that I want to bring before you. Luke 5, 36 through 38 says, no one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined, but new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. And so we see in this scripture that it says, no one tears a piece of cloth from an old garment and pairs it with a new garment. 
you know, um, <laughs> the funny thing is that when you go to like, you know, paint your apartment or your house or what have you, and you start off painting and then the other room looks kind of dull or the furniture doesn't look right once you paint it because it's hard to put something new with something old, okay? And so when you are making a fresh start in life, you first of all, you got to start with God, but also you have to realize that you can't pair old with new. Some of those old things you're going to have to move out of your life in order to make a fresh start. You're not going to be able to go the same places you went, do the same things you did, hang with the same people. Because sometimes when you want to uh, go to a new level, the people who are on the level with you now are having an old thinking. And so we want to make friends with everyone. We want to be friendly with everyone. I get it. But um, the, the people that you bring close to you, you want to be careful about that because your way of thinking may be new and theirs may be old and it's just not going to work out as you see in this scripture. Look, there's some consequences for bringing old and new together. It says, otherwise, I'm in uh, part of that scripture there, it says, otherwise he will both tear the new and the uh, peace from the new will not match the old. We said that. And it says, and no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, here's the consequence. The new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. Okay. But new wine must be put into fresh skins. And so you could ruin um, your destiny. You could ruin the direction that you're going in by trying to hold on to something that is old, something that is past. We're not talking about age here, okay? We're not talking about that, but we're talking about direction. We're talking about mindset. We're talking about what God has for you. And you, sometimes you have to come out of the old way of thinking, the old way of doing things so that you can get a fresh start, a, a renewed start in the way that God has for you. Come on, let's look at the other scripture here. Joel 2.25 says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter. My great army will I set among you. Isn't that, isn't that awesome that God will, um, he will uh, restore to you the things that have been eaten, eaten up, the things that have been ruined over life, the things that have gotten rotten and moldy. Isn't it awesome to know that God will restore that? And so it doesn't have to stay the same way. You know, uh, a lot of times when milk gets spoiled or whatever, we have to throw it out. But God doesn't throw you out, okay? He can restore it. He can, he can make it new again. And so another way to make a fresh start is to realize that although things did not work, Work out. It can be restored. If you are in God, you have the faith and belief and you put it in his hands, things can be restored for you. So let's go look at the other scripture as well. Revelations 21, 5. And he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Wow, when you look at Revelations, because very often we read from the Old Testament and sometimes the New Testament, but when we look at Revelations, we look at things that are to come. And even still, God says, as he said, and he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. Wow, he's making all things new. And that's why I always say a lot of times at the end of the broadcast, no matter what we're going through in life, in the end, we win. That's why you want to stay in Christ because he's going to make all things new. And when we look at what happened in 2020, wow, what a mess. But there was still a message in that mess. There was still something that's good that's going to come out of the year 2020. And as we move forward and we keep our hands in God's hands, we began to see that he will make all things new. And not only that, he said in his word, he says, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. In other words, God said, you could take it to the bank. What I say is going to come to pass. You know, uh, we love our parents. We love, you know, our friends and and coworkers and family members. And there are some people that we really trust and we, 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 we know they have our backs. 
but no one has our backs as much as God. And sometimes those people we love have great intentions, but you know, they're only human. Some things falter, some things fall by the wayside, even if they want to do right. Sometimes things just happen, but with God, you can put to, you can, whatever he says is yes. And amen. You can totally trust in it and nothing can stop him from what he says he is going to do. And so we're going to look at this last scripture before we move on today. Job 8, 7, though your beginning was insignificant, yet your end will increase greatly. Mm, I like that. Though your beginning was insignificant, yet your, your end will increase greatly. Wow, isn't that amazing hope when you are making a fresh start? You, it doesn't matter how you start, but it does matter how you finish. And here in the word, it says you can end greatly, even though your beginning wasn't a, a wonderful or something that people would write about or uh, something that people would celebrate. When you look at Jesus, he was born in a manger in a stable, but look how his end turned out as he stands and seated on the right side of the father of God with all power in his hands. Wow. That is so amazing to know. And that's so encouraging that as you make a fresh start, it doesn't matter how you begin. I know without a mother, without a dad, uh, without money, without status, without respect, um, without a proper home, without proper education, whatever the circumstance may be, no matter how you start, you can finish greatly. And that's amazing. And through this whole broadcast, I talked about having a relationship with God. And in order to have a relationship with God, you've got to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins. So you've got to admit that you've made mistakes, that you haven't done everything right, and that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's God's son. And that if you confess your sins, that he will be faithful and just to cleanse you from all righteousness. So you just have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that He that God raised Jesus from the dead. And if you believe that, then you are what we call saved. And now you can have a relationship with God. You can do all of these things and know that when you have a fresh start, it's going to be amazing, even better than when you first started. So with all of that being said, I want to now pray for you and your concerns. So I want you to put in the chat box, in the comment section, no matter when you're watching this, no matter what time you're watching this, no matter where you're watching this around the world, I want you to put your prayer request in the chat box. And as I see it, I'm going to pray for you. And as each one of us see it, we're going to pray for you. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you, oh God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise, recognizing you are the one true God, and beside you there is none other. God, we are so grateful to you. First of all, we ask that you forgive us for our sins, the things that we have done wrong, said wrong, oh God, the complaints and the, the inability to, uh, to have faith to move forward. And God, forgive us for thinking that we could not start again. We are so grateful for what you have taught us in your word. We thank you, oh God, for giving us an opportunity to have a fresh start to renew ourselves each and every day, not just in a new year. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for keeping us, oh God. Thank you for getting us from one year to another. We are so grateful, oh God, for keeping us strong, oh God, for healing our bodies, oh God, for being us, being with us during bereavement, oh God, and sickness and all of this calamity that we've experienced. We thank you, oh God, for being with us. And now, God, we pray for every concern that you have in this comment section for every situation, oh God, even the replay viewers, oh God, who have um, prayer concerns that didn't um, make it during the live broadcast, God, we put them before you, knowing you have all power in your hands, oh God. You told us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us, and we're doing that, oh God, knowing that you are able to do anything but fail. We pray for the finances, oh God. We pray for the sick bodies. We pray, oh God, 
for depression and suicidal thoughts, oh God. We pray for lonely hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Still praying for Mike Maldo and Smith family and the Miles family, oh God. We still praying for Judy and her son, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just reach our hands towards you and look to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing our help comes from you. And God, whether you say yes or no, or wait a minute, we know that your answer will be better than we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you've been blessed by this lesson in prayer, please tell me in the comment section, I've been blessed. And I thank you guys so very much. I wanna recognize all of you who are watching me on so many social media platforms. I mean, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And also on our podcast, Otherwise Courtship Devotional. Thank you so much. And make sure that if you want to watch a replay of this broadcast, that you go to my YouTube channel. The link is down there. Make sure you click it and watch over and over again. We have tons of other videos too that you can watch in business and finances, um, you know, creating streams of income and business and different things like that, as well as what I'm known for, Wise Courtship. There it is back there. <laughs> the Relationship and Marriage uh, Guide. But before we end, I want you to have a word of encouragement from Dr. Annette West. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Annette West here, sharing an encouragement with you. Let's look at Psalm 5010. It says, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. God has unlimited resources. That's the word. God has unlimited resources. You know, he said he has the cattle on a thousand hills. That means he's not limited. Sometimes we limit God, but God has the capacity to do everything. And listen, everything belongs to him. He says he will supply all of our needs. So what are you worried about? What are you fretting about? What are you complaining about? God always comes through for his. Yeah, you want it today, but it's not today. That doesn't mean it's not coming through. Be patient in the process. Just remember that God does own it all, that God does have unlimited resources. And no matter what our eyes see, let us seek to engage him in the spirit realm so that we will be able to understand that even though it hasn't come to fruition, oh, it shall come to pass. So hold on, trust him, and know that everything belongs to him. He will work it out when in his timing, in his season. Bye-bye. Well, that was an on-time word from Dr. Annette West. I thank you so much. She is the publisher of John Tate Publishing. And um, yes, God is unlimited. He's unlimited in all the things that he can do. And so I want to encourage you as you make your fresh start, know that you can put your hands in God's hands because he has unlimited power, he has unlimited favor, he has unlimited grace and unlimited mercy. And no matter what you went through the year before, your life looks so much brighter because you have God in your life and you can take his word right to the bank. Well, I gotta go, but remember you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you, um, Marcus Cox. And thank you, Dr. Annette West. And remember, it, during this time of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. 
all the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship Store. Thank <laughs> you.